Hello, everyone. Dr. Victoria Skirbo here, speaking to you from the Caesar Transformation Healing Center in Wareham, Massachusetts. Uh, we're going to look at the um, numerology, Kabbalah, and energy um, portion of my astrology and Kabbalah uh, presentation that I do uh, every, every month. And uh, of course, we're doing it for July 2022, so it's different then June. <laughs> and then of course, uh, I will, I am going to be doing the astrology of the first nine days, but that will be in a separate video, mainly so I don't keep you here too long, because there's a lot to say in the astrology, and there's always a lot to say uh, in the Kabbalah. So we can get started right now. Okay, so as I usually start, we're going to start with the numbers. And um, the numerology of July 2022, the monthly vibration is the seven. Of course, July is the seventh month. The universal year vibration, 2022, vibrates to a six. When we add seven and six together, we get the vibration of the month of July 2022. And we have a 13 four vibration. So the monthly vibration of seven symbolizes a point where spirit and matter meet in consciousness, a cyclic completion and a time for rest and introspection before, before the harvest manifests. On the eighth day, God rested. All things need to rest and go within. Be still and to know. It is called the sacred spiritual number, the energy of the mystic. And I got this from Numerology, Spiritual Life Vibrations by Jean. Now, of course, the universal year is a six. We've talked about it every month since, since January. And so some of this may seem repetitive, but certainly worth repeating. Uh, the six symbolizes responsibility and service that needs to be done with, uh, that should say love <laughs> and live, live love, live love and protection, a desire to bring harmony, peace, justice, and truth into all experiences of life. Also from Spiritual Life Vibrations by Jean. And incidentally, last month's uh, monthly, monthly vibration was this vibration. And I would say by the end of June, um, there was a, an increased sense of harmony, peace, and justice just a little bit. <laughs> We're going for much more. So when we add those two together, we get the 13-4 vibration, of course. What, is, uh, what does Jean say about this? She says 13-4 is the number of death and rebirth. It is considered a karmic debt number vibration. The purpose and goal of this vibration is to bring the spiritual insights into expression and into practical form and structure. To do this, we must rid ourselves of the old and rebuild for the new. So this is a, a promise perhaps that in July, we're going to have to let go of something. And um, this vibration, this 13-4 is connected to the sign of Scorpio. And of course, the south node of the moon is in Scorpio. We'll see more connections as we go. So now we're going to look at the tarot cards associated with these vibrations and how they, um, how they interact with the tree of life and perhaps what we can glean from that. So the monthly vibration is the seven. And as most people who study or even just watch tarot know that the seven card is the card of the chariot. Uh, it is called um, the intelligence. Excuse me. Move something here. Uh, the intelligence of the house of influence. Um, that is what the, 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 and it is the 18th path on the uh, tree of life. It is associated, of course, with the chariot card, and that card is associated with the sign of cancer. We have the sun, Mercury, and Venus all in Cancer this month. In fact, the sun and Mercury um, 
and possibly Venus, I don't know if I looked, uh, are all making uh, oppositions to Pluto um, in July. I will check, I will check for Venus, we may have to wait. I think Venus, we have to wait till August for her to make her opposition. I believe so. So, um, <laughs> oppositions bring awareness. Pluto is, is a planet of power. It's really coming up against forces greater than yourself. So we could have some realizations around that. Um, what we have um, agency over and what we don't, and then perhaps to work from that point. Knowing your limitations, knowing, knowing how far you can go to the edge before you have to pull back perhaps. Um, when this card represents swift movement in the direction of your destiny. This is the path where the soul takes on the armor of the personality to do the work of the soul. And we can see in this card, the chariot, there's a charioteer, he's wearing armor, he's got moons on his shoulders connected to, um, connected to cancer. And on his, on his chest, he has the square uh, connected to the, um, the physical plane, the, 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 um, the salt of the earth as it were, saying that he is moving or this, this, soul, this soul has taken on this armor so that he can um, move through our, our denser physical environment, right? This is found on the path that connects Baina, the Sephirot of understanding, to Kabura, the Sephirot of severity. The chariot is the vehicle or the force of spirit. A vehicle carries, conveys, or expresses. We are the chariots of our, of our own fire. We are the chariots of our soul. Our bodies are our chariots, guys, just in case you didn't know. Um, the human personality as the vehicle of expression for the soul. You can be moving on to a new path which involves the essence of your spirit. Seven is really the essence of your spirit. It's self-analysis, it's self-knowledge, it's um, introspection, it's to a certain extent isolation. So there is a vibration in this month uh, where you will want to have time to yourself. And however way you have to find that, find it because it's imperative, I think, for us to move through the challenges and the energy shifts that are definitely happening this, this, this month. The universal year vibration, the lovers, the 17th path on the tree of life called the separating or disposing intelligence. This is the card of the lovers. It's associated with the sign of Gemini. Both Mercury and Venus move through Gemini this month. This is even more than a card of love, which most people say, oh, the lovers, it's a card of love, but it's really a card of choice. It is found on the path that connects Baina, the Sephirot of understanding, the divine feminine, mother goddess, with Tipra, beauty, balance, harmony, the sun, S-U-N, the sun, S-O-N, the Christ consciousness, 17th path. So that's the path that we're walking on all year. And we see it in Gemini, the reality of our duality. <laughs> I like that. The lovers represent the sword that slashes down through the cosmos, separating the whole of us into discrete forms. 
The sword distributes gender and polarity through the universe, creating the tension of opposites. <coughs> It is, the force that, it, it is the force that takes the limitless substance of the universe and categorizes it. So again, we'll have a choice this month and every month in a six year. And now the vibration of the month of July plus the year vibration of six, we get the 13, four vibration. This is the 24th path on the tree of life. It is associated with the death card and with the sign of Scorpio. The south node is in the sign of Scorpio at this time. In fact, the new moon that we just had at the end of June had a hammer of Thor and a yod um, and Saturn squaring and the south node being the, the resolution node or Saturn square the nodes all that energy in that south node in Scorpio. And we need to see the, we need to see the shadow so that we can understand it, heal it and release it and then move into move into a more stable future. Um, this is a path of change and regeneration, a path where the personality must surrender to the soul. It's interesting that the seven vibration is the way the soul comes into incarnation. And it is in this vibration, the death vibration, where we let go of the, the personality and move towards the soul. Very interesting. And both those paths, both the path well, no, okay, that's enough. I was thinking of something, but it'd be too hard to explain. Ah. This, we must desire to aspire. That's our desire on this path, our desire to aspire. Uh, new thought forms replacing old. Death is our protection against stagnation. So wherever there is stagnation in your life, this may be a good place to clear it out. I have a few places of stagnation in my house that really, really need clearing out. And I think that's gonna be one of the things I do in July. Um, just a lot of, still have a lot of my mother's things, just have boxes from things that were sent. All of that is out, all of that is out and only keeping the precious things, right? Only the things that really matter or that are useful to you. Right. Um, this is the path where we face our deepest fears. So in that respect, I would avoid being fearful. Now we all have fears and uh, fear is something that we need to pay attention to. But if it's a fear that comes from ruminating in the mind, it's different than a fear that comes from something you feel in your body. The one that you feel in your body is the truth. The one that's in your mind may not be. So this really is, a, um, in a way, a releasing of the fear so that we can move into our bodies, the North Node in Taurus. Um, the 13-4 is a karmic debt number. The purpose and goal of this number is to bring spiritual insights into expression and into practical form and structure. Karmic debt numbers are numbers that we agreed to, to move through. 
it's like preordained that we would have this, these experiences on in, with this particular vibration. So if you're here witnessing it, you're, you, you need to be. <laughs> you're here to witness it. You're here to understand it. And that understanding, your own personal understanding and everybody else's own personal understanding lends into a sense of a fuller understanding for all of us, honestly. Energetically, that's the way it works. Consciously, people may not be understanding it from a mental perspective, but from an energetic perspective, they will. And they will call it what they'll call it. But we can be, we need to be stronger. We need to <clears throat> rise up from this pit, this black pit of the South Node in, in, in Scorpio. And not that Scorpio is a black pit or people who are Scorpios are a black pit. But this is, these are demons and dragons and fears and, and shame and, and, and all those things that you, you, just, you, you just wouldn't wanna divulge are getting divulged. Um, but it's the nature of what's going on right now and necessary for the new to come in, for the old to be um, pretty much pooped out. Um, Scorpio rules poop and the ability to poop actually, I think. So there you go. So I have this um, diagram up and we can see where all these, these um, cards we looked at. Here's the seven. The, the um, I'm sorry if you can hear the background. My neighbor has the guys that come and do his lawn. Hopefully it's not too disturbing to you. I always think it's a lot more disturbing to you than it actually ends up being. So hopefully, and um, I wouldn't dare close the window because it's really, really hot. So sorry about that if it's a bother for you. So we have, um, we have the, um, the, the chariot card on the path between Baina and Gabura. Baina is in the supernal triangle, right? This is this triangle of spirit right here, the supernal triangle. This is the triangle of soul. This is the triangle of personality. And this is our life on life. This is our manifested existence. This is the only thing on the tree of life that has form. Everything else is in the higher vibrational states. Of course, the highest being Kether. Um, so we, we have a lot of energy coming from pretty high up on the tree. We have two of the cards connected to Baina, the, the divine feminine. And there's, I'm sorry, I have to do this. This is driving me crazy. If I start to glisten, just ignore me. Okay, <laughs> too noisy for me. All right, so we have two of these paths connected to Baina, the divine feminine. And if you don't think the divine feminine is kicking ass and taking names, you'd be wrong because the divine feminine is, and she has been for quite a while now. So it does take time to overturn the ship called the patriarchy, the power over the fascist state or whatever you want to call it right? The energy of control, control over women's bodies. It's, it's totally symbolic of the patriarchy trying to enforce its energy on the feminine. But the feminine is in the process of rising and nothing is going to hold us back. Nothing. And I'm not talking that, I'm not talking about that from the perspective necessarily of a woman. Uh, of course, I'm more aware of my feminine side, perhaps, but this is everybody's feminine side, the right to be in a body, the right to the rights to your own body and the rights to your feelings. And in a way, the Judeo-Christian, the whole Judeo-Christian thing was a way of controlling women's uh, hearts and bodies uh, by making them feel sinful, by denying the power that they had, by not educating them by whatever means, possible. This is what the Taliban does. This is why they don't want to educate girls. So we are rising. And there, 
And we can see the energy of this in the mere fact that Baina is so prominent. The mother goddess is so prominent in this, uh, in this monthly vibrational state we find ourselves in. And then we come down here where we have the death card connecting Tipareth, the Sephiroth of beauty and balance with Netzath, the, 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 the Sephiroth of our feelings, the forces of nature. This is a Venus ruled Sephiroth. Netzach is Venus ruled. This is the sun, the sun and Venus moving through uh, the sun moving through Cancer and then Leo and Venus moving through Gemini and Cancer. This is, and these are the two signs. So we have Gemini and Cancer. So this Gemini Cancer energy is <clears throat> quite powerful this month. If we look at the pillars, the pillar of severity or destruction. This is actually the feminine side. The pillar of mercy or creation, this is the masculine side. And then we have the, the pillar of mildness or harmony, or also called the pillar of transformation, the past, the present, and the future. We have Bina activated on two paths, connecting the present moment, right? the present moment with the future. We are creating our future day by day. So there's no point in looking too far ahead. We just need to look in what, at what's in front of us. And then here we have to breath, which is in the, the place of the, um, the, the present, right? The place of power, the only place where we really have power. And the, this path connects the pillar of the past. And this is Scorpio. This is, this is the, um, the death card. Letting go of the past in order to create the future. So let's look and see what chakras are activated at this time. Um, if we look at the, on the right side of this, we see all the chakras listed and all the levels of the tree of life. The seven vibration and the seven vibration is right here on the tree of life. Activates the third eye here through Bina, through its connection to Bina and the throat through its connection with Gabura. The creative principle, the womb of the world, the anima, anima mundi, I think it's called, or the soul, maybe it's not moon, anima mundi, the world soul, I think that's what it's called, anima mundi, uh, connecting to the spiritual warrior, Mars. Mars starts the month in Aries, sh shifts into Taurus, on the fifth, I believe. And um, plods through Taurus for the rest of the month, step by step, slowly and surely, and slowly and surely you will get there. It just, we have to be patient. In fact, seven is a vibration of patience as well. The sixth vibration activates the third eye to the heart. Third eye to the heart through the path of the lover's card right here, connecting Bina, the divine mother, to her son, S-O-N-S-U, and Christ consciousness all the sacrifice gods, Mithra, Dionysus, Osiris, they all sit here in Tipra, the mediator. It mediates the lower tree, the lower tree from the higher tree. 
it mediates that. It's the center of the tree located in the heart chakra. But what do we love and what do we see and how does that line up seen on this path? And then the 13, four vibration here connects the heart with the solar plexus, following your heart, following your heart, allowing your solar plexus to act as a conduit for what you feel in your heart. And also a conduit for what the higher tree wants us to accomplish. Because the lower tree, these, these four sephat are there because we're incarnate. When we disincarnate, they sort of go back up like um, like the spaceship, you know, when the, when the aliens come, it goes down, whoop, and then it comes up, whoop, that's us, that's us. And it activates the heart and the solar plexus. So the power that you have now is to effectuate your world through that which is most true to your heart. And the things that we need to let go of or any sense, any sense at all of unworthiness. So the third eye or anja, anja means to perceive or to command. The path of the chariot, the path of the lovers activate the third eye through the sephirth bina or bana, the divine feminine, the world soul, the sephirth of understanding. So our third eyes are pumping, of course, all year, because we're looking at this also being activated by the universal year, the sixth year. The throat chakra, Vishuddha, which means to purify. The path of the chariot activates the throat through the sephirath Gabura, the sephirath of severity. This is the red one. This is the one ruled by Mars, whose symbol is a sword the sword of justice. Gabur is also connected to the path of justice, the justice card, the 11 vibration. The, in fact, the sword that the, um, the sword that the justice, that justice holds is the sword of Gabur and the scales are the scales of Tipura balance. Justice defends and corrects. Isn't that good news? <laughs> Struggle and strife purify. We're pretty pure these days, don't you think? How much struggle and strife is the world going through? Anahata, the heart chakra. The word anahata means unstruck, meaning the sound of creation that didn't have to strike anything else to make a sound. The path of the lovers and the, and the path of death activate the heart chakra via the sephirat tipura, the sephirat of beauty, where divine will is directed toward harmony and natural balance. And Manapura, the solar plexus or lustrous gem. The path of death activates the solar plexus this month through the sephirath netzak. In the sephirath of netzak is the sephirath of victory. Netzak releases floods of powerful, formless, and uninhibited emotions. So there's going to be a lot of things coming out. People expressing themselves, you have to step back from it. You have the right to express yourself, say what you need to say. Um, but we really have to be aware that this is a huge sort of flush in a way of a lot of very difficult feelings that people have stuffed and suppressed for lifetimes. So what can we do? We can hold the space, we can shine our light, we can hold everyone, and I mean everyone, even the green, the, the orange monster there in 
in poise and peace so that they can learn the lesson they need to learn and we can start to build our future instead of this ridiculous past crap where nothing gets done and everybody's pointing fingers and all and four fingers are pointing back so that doesn't help doesn't help we're here to learn to love six is a vibration of community and service and we have to learn how to be of service to each other this year and this month well this year for sure so I'm going to leave it at that. I do. I am going to do the astrology. It's it's nine days, so it's a little bit longer, and there are quite a quite a few things happening, including the solar return for the United States. I'm going to take a look at that. Um, the fact that the um, the Mars return for the January sixth insurrection occurs on. Um, the 4th of July, and I heard from a, a, a watcher that perhaps um, the ex-president may be announcing his campaign for presidency on the 4th of July. And uh, that has me a bit concerned. So we will see what the, we will see, right? Uh, but just a bit, not too concerned to lose any sleep and certainly not too concerned to do the work that I'm here to do. And part of that work is to talk to you guys every month. So I hope you enjoyed this. Please like and subscribe. If you would like a reading with me, you can contact me on my website, the Siege of Transformation.com. Um, there is a link below if you're interested. And I am going to an announcement for my Kabbalah students. Um, I have had, um, Two, two groups of students take Beginner's Kabbalah, and uh, I'm going to be doing another Kabbalah class in about two weeks. Uh, I still have to look at the schedule. I will, I will put it up on the community tab or on the community page if you want to know when it's actually going to start. Um, we're going to look at um, how it connects to the numbers uh, and numerology, and we're going to look at how it connects to the tarot uh, a little bit more deeply and some other fun stuff. So if you would be interested and probably quite a healthy dose of astrology, why not, right? Six weeks, we can fit it all in, can't we? But what, what we do fit in is always great and the people are wonderful. So uh, for my old students there and my new students, if you're interested in that, um, just uh, keep your eye on the community page. <laughs> All right, guys, take care. Much love. See you next month. Ciao.